my name is Walter Umlaub, and this is Physics of the Magnitude of Resultant Vectors. So here I consider a simple physical system, which consists of a block with mass m on an incline that is elevated above the ground at an angle theta. And what I'm interested in is finding the resultant force vector. So resultant vector in physics is simply the addition of all vectors in a physical system of a particular type. So here if I consider force vectors, then I have the force of gravity acting on my mass, which is pointing down, and the normal force, which is acting orthogonal to this inclined surface. So the next thing I want to do is pick a coordinate system or frame of reference and I'm going to use the surface of the incline as my x-axis and of course the orthogonal direction as my y-axis. So if I redraw this physical system I have my y-axis and my x-axis which represents the surface of the incline and I'm going to redraw my force vectors on this frame of reference in this coordinate system and then I'm going to split up these forces into the respective orthogonal components, add up all the y components of the vectors and all the x components of the vectors to determine and derive my resultant vector. So here along this y-axis I have my normal force and along my x-axis and y-axis, I'm going to have the force of gravity off at an angle theta, because this angle is the same as this one, and my force of gravity is simply the mass of the block times g, which is the gravitational acceleration, and my normal force is completely along the y-axis, so now I just need to split up my gravitational force vector into its respective x and y components. We call these projections. So the y component is going to be equal to mg cosine theta, and the component of the gravitational force vector along the x-axis is going to be mg sine theta, and the normal force is actually equivalent in magnitude to the vertical component of this gravity force. So these vectors will cancel each other out. So my net or resultant force vector is going to have a zero vertical component, this is j hat, it's the unit vector that lies along the y-axis, plus the sum of all the x components of my vectors. In this case, there's only one, mg sine theta times i hat, which is the unit vector along the x-axis. So I know that my resultant force vector is equal to the mass of the object in question times the resultant acceleration vector. So it's simply going to be equal to mg sine theta i hat. And if I'm interested in the magnitude of this vector, well first I can see that I can simply cancel out the masses, so the magnitude of the resultant vector is simply going to be equal to the magnitude of the right hand side, g sine theta i hat, and I know that the magnitude of this unit vector is simply equal to 1, so I have the resultant acceleration simply equal to g sine theta. And I can test this to make sure this is the proper equation. If theta is equal to zero, then this block would simply lie along the surface of the ground. So sine of zero is zero, so the block would not accelerate. If theta is equal to, one, uh, to 90 degrees, which is equal to pi over two radians, then I would have the block right next to a wall essentially and it would just fall down because this is frictionless. So sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1 
So my acceleration would just be the gravitational acceleration, g. So I know that I'm correct and this expression makes sense. My name is Walter Unglob and this is Physics of the Magnitude of Resultant Vectors. Mm -hmm.